Welcome back to another Strictly Collections episode. This is episode 5 I believe and we have none other than Tony or Mambu from my Discord. This guy is actually local to me and he brought over a $75,000 collection that he built in just the last 3 years. It's absolutely absurd. I'm super excited to show it to you guys and I hope you guys enjoy and learn something. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so to start this episode off, we're gonna start with slabs, okay? Now, Tony, are you a slabs guy? Are you a binder guy? Like, did you start off with slabs? Did you start off with binders? I definitely started off with uh, binders, for sure. Uh, yeah. Slabs are kind of like when you, we get into, we kind of want that like more minty collections, right? Yeah. Um, that's kind of when you want to chase for the higher ends, right? Yeah. So that's, that's where I got into it eventually. And when you started coming back, you said you started collecting like 2020, right? Like that's yeah. when you really got back in? Yeah, exactly. And um, was that slabs or was that cards? That was definitely cards. Definitely cards still. It was originally just about kind of like, you know, foiling out your deck from, you know, the childhood <laughs> days, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you kind of like, okay, I like that card from before, but I really couldn't afford it, right? Um, so why don't I just get that? And then kind of over time, you just be like, Oh, but I'm looking at this corner or this nick or this surface. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I can't really stand that, right? So let me get that, you know, PSA 8, PSA 8, 9. And then you kind of find out, okay, am I really satisfied with a 9 instead yeah. of like a 10? <laughs> and, you know, the rest is history. The rest is history. Fair enough. Let's get into it then. You have the three Egyptian god cards in Secret Rare. I find that these are pretty much like the the gateway drug to slabs for a lot of people because everybody wants these in PSA 10. You are actually exactly right because <laughs> the first slabs I owned was a kind of like PSA 9 yeah. uh, set of these slabs. Yeah. Because, um, you know, God cards, you know, if anybody grew up watching Yu-Gi-Oh, that, that's it, right? Yeah. That, that was like the holy grail <laughs> um, for us, right? Anyways, so um, yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, that, that's what actually got me into the game as well. Like, I think I picked up DDS PSA 10, and then right after that, I bought the Egyptian God cards. And you know what's interesting is that these are like the highest pops for Yu Gi Oh cards. These yeah. are all like over 400. Yes. And yet they still hold pretty insane value for yes. how much they're yes. graded. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, I mean, it's a testament to, to just how loved these three cards are. And I definitely think that this is the highest rarity. Would you agree with that? Like the GBI secrets? Yeah, uh, I will totally. I actually, in some ways, I really like the G4 ones, which you'll see. Interesting. Um, because they were, I, I think when I started collecting, I placed a lot of emphasis on like the first print. Right, so the first edition yeah, LLBs, yeah, yeah. the first edition that, yeah. and to me the G4 was like the first edition mm -hmm. cards, right? Yeah. Um, but this, these are the first, you know, like English copies. That's right? why I actually so. collect OCG myself, is because I want that rookie card, you know, that yeah. first appearance. Yeah. Of, yeah. I, I, I feel that. I, I yeah. definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. There. So you'll see that next. All right. So this is what you're talking about. Here, exactly. Right? The G4 God cards. So the G4 God cards are pretty much very close to the original ones but if you guys have never seen these before the only difference is that the layout right so you can see here that you get a bigger picture for the monster art and then you have uh, it's, it's pretty much like even on both sides like top and bottom i actually measured this believe it or not <laughs> and this is why i always like I, I i i draw a lot of hype towards series one and series two because i think they actually look like portraits here. When, when you look at the card, it, it truly looks like this is um, like this is the portrait, this is the mat, and then this is the frame, like the black part. So I'm a big fan of this layout. I'm a big fan of the Series 1 layout, and I can see why you appreciate them. Now, is it true that there's a version of these that has like parallel error, or is that this one? Um... Like what, I remember the, seeing that there's like a parallel rare of I these think cards. The, I, I think the uh, parallel ones are probably more reprints, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. But the so, secrets so like G4s these... are secrets, like they're yeah. pretty much exact replicas. Of yeah, them. yeah. They're, they actually share, I think they share the same secret foiling, the prismatic-ish um, yeah. secret foiling, which is really nice. These are fantastic. Yeah. Incredible cards, man. Yeah. Incredible cards. Yeah, so first first ever God cards, first ever English God cards, you know, I think you just got to have them. Oh, yeah. So, see, this one is parallel. This is what I was talking about. You see how it's like parallel? Yeah. Okay. So wait, why is this one? Is there different versions? I think they're the same. Look at this. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But why is this one not there? It's just a bit weird. 
This one has it. This one doesn't have it at all. I never noticed that too. Like this doesn't have it at all. Yeah. Because this is the thing that, because I wanted to collect these, but the thing that detracted me was like that parallel rare. Because I was like, I, I like when it's just the inside is holographic. Right. And I, I, I like, see this one is super prominent. Like you can yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the raw. Yeah. But then for the slifer, you can't see it at all. Very interesting. Yeah. I think I've, as far as I know, there's only one printing of G4s. So very interesting. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have um, another modern version nuts. of God cards. These are modern, yeah. and these are the secret rares from King's Court. Is that correct? The secret fail rares. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, these are because you kind of collect some. I think one of my habits is kind of collecting the special rarities. So things okay. like ultimate ghost, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I think the introduction of Secret Pharaohs or Pharaohs were in general in the yeah. TCG. Um, this is like the first of its kind uh, and it's got cards. So I yeah. feel like you kind of have to have it, right? Even though the falling isn't very prominent and as you can clearly see. Yeah. Uh, but they are, as far as like got cards goes, these are still one of the special printings. But they look great, like to be honest with you. They do. The, they the do. only thing that I think I don't like is the fact that it's not like that red, blue, yellow layer. Yeah, yeah, because these are the playable versions. The playable versions, versions right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, Especially the slifer. The slifer, like you can see the pattern very much. Clearly. Yes, yes. It's just that I think later on the feral rarity, the rarities, the foilings becomes a bit a lot more prominent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I saw like the oricalcos, right? Like, right, exactly. So in contrast, this one, uh, you know, didn't come out that great. It's a little bit more muted. Yeah, a little bit more muted. But they're still great. So beautiful. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have another set of god cards. <laughs> yes. Now these are the Prismatic God Box. Yes. These went for so cheap. Yes. And I, I think, I'm pretty sure they're still cheap. No? They're, they're still cheap. cheap. Uh, you think the GBI population is high? <laughs> Wait till you see this one. So. This is in the thousands, right? For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cheap these cheap. are really, really well made. I think the Prismatic God Box is like one of the most well received, you know, products, especially yeah. during the COVID years. Yeah. Um, everything about it was nice. Uh, the God Card came out great, and it's kind of like the Prismatic, mm -hmm. really like decked out foil um, yeah. rarity. Yeah. Um, so I definitely recommend them. And they come sealed too, if yeah. you know, for anyone who a, likes to keep it sealed. This is a great budget option. Exactly. Like if you're looking for God cards that like, you know, really, and I don't even believe we got like prismatics for um, TCG, right? No. We didn't no. even get Starlights. We right? didn't get Starlights, yes. Interesting. Yeah. These look fantastic. So these are kind of like the Starlight equivalents in a way, so yeah. yeah. And because the whole thing is hollow, the hollow stars are not actually, they don't bother They're, me as much. You uh, know? Yeah, I whole, know, I know a lot, it bothers a lot of people. It yeah. doesn't bother me much, but you know, I can understand that. So, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. All right. That's the prismatic guard box. All right. I think there's one more set of guard cards, it seems. Yes. This is a lot more <laughs> recent. Now this one, I'm going to give you some heat for. <laughs> <laughs> Why on earth would somebody <laughs> buy PSA 10s of these? Like, what, what is the thought process? Yeah, yeah. So, hear me, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> I think quarter century secret rares are kind of like being overlooked just because they're so similar to Starlights in a way. Yeah. I really, really like Starlights. Yeah. Um, and I also, in a way, uh, you know, probably like quarter centuries more so than others. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I think they're kind of like, they're going to be one of those, like, you know, print for run for like, you know, a year mm -hmm. pretty much. And then you're not really going to see them later yeah. on. Right. Um, if at all. So very similar. So I think it was really a shame that TCG missed out on the 20th secret mm -hmm. rares. Right. And when the OCG got them, there was a red text. Yeah. This is the, you know, yellow text version, the yes. gold text. Um, so that's why I think it makes it a bit more special because they're going to like, we're going to have starlights in the future. Right. Yeah. We're going to have like ghost ultimates and whatever. I don't I think, but I don't think we're going to get quarter century mm -hmm. later on. Very interesting. Yeah. I actually feel the same way about the 20th because it's so exclusive yeah. to the OCG. Exactly. I'm a huge fan. You know, I actually was planning a trip to Japan and in that trip, what I wanted to do was like spend a month there and like try to pick up All the, the whole 200, 240 20th anniversary. That's yeah, that's be expensive. It's, it's <laughs> dumb expensive for real. Yeah. But I always wanted them. I saw them in 
I think it was Strictly Collections episode one or two where, I, no, it was episode two where I went to New York, I saw some guy's binder and he had like most of them. I was like, wow, this looks incredible. Yeah. Like, cause the red text is so unique. I love the red text. And I, yeah. I think it was a shame too, because I don't know if you know this, but um, with OCG card, with Japanese text, um, mm. because the way that, uh, you know, Japanese texts are kind of like written, Yeah. right? The text colors don't really get highlighted all that much. Yes. But when it's on TCG, when it's on English letters, yeah. it's like so much more pronounced. Yeah. Right. And you love it right so yeah, i think the, that was a shame the, the red text is crazy yes. I, so i think that was a bit of shame and speaking of red text here is the 20th anniversary dark magician girl now this one i i showed you guys in my dark magician girl collection video i'm a big fan of this card i i think this is one of the best i think it's like in terms of OCG, yep. it's really a top fiver. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't like. There's a G3, G3 rare, the Ghost rare. Yep. And then I would say it's this, right? Would you say there's another one that's? In terms of, of original it? artwork, yeah, I think yeah. this is probably it. Yeah, like th yeah. this is gorgeous, man. This is so beautiful, man. I remember this hitting like almost fifteen hundred dollars at one point in PSA ten. Yes. And yes. It's a I, very high pop. Yeah, I saw your video. I was like, I gotta have that. <laughs> Um, so this is one of those, you know, red text um, special because I don't think we're going to see 20th Secret again, right? Yeah, for sure. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really, really so nice. So I kind of just had to have it. So I graded this one myself as yeah. well. I have the sealed DVD. Oh. Uh, yeah. I don't have the card anymore, but I have the sealed DVD. Um, I picked it up recently because it, it dropped so much. Like I, right. I remember it was one point like a thousand dollars and now it's like two, three hundred. Yeah. Bucks, just about so maybe like half a year ago, this was about six hundred bucks raw. Right, yeah. but nowadays you can probably pick up a 10 for yeah. 600, 700. Yeah, so. exactly, yeah. yeah. This is such a nice card, man. Yeah. All right, next up we have Magi Magi Magician Girl. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard the story of this, but the main reason that this did not come to the TCG was because uh, Takahashi himself didn't want to censor any more of his artwork, his original art, so they never brought it over. Do you think we're ever gonna get this? Like maybe lost art or something like that? Honestly, uh, that is hard to say. Um, that's kind of same same thing as asking, are we gonna get a TCG official on Sensor Dark Magician Girl? Yeah, that's <laughs> and, true. Uh, your answer is as good as anybody's. Um, so maybe yeah. one day. Maybe one day. Yeah. But this is a very cheap card. Like if somebody's looking to pick up yep. original artwork. Yeah, uh, has and never been reprinted. Like this is the this is it right there. Yeah, and if you want to kind of like collect all the kind of like hand drawn yeah, yeah. Takahashi arts, you that's need, a must have. You actually need one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but you can see that there's no border around this. Yeah. Right, and then it's also signed at the by, bottom right. Yeah, by the signature. Yep. Beautiful card. Yes. All right. So this is the Rarity Collection Blue Eyes. What's the reason for this? Is you just like the ghost or first ever Blue Eyes and Ghost. One, one more, Fair can enough. I say? Fair right. enough. And this is like the most beautiful uh, ghost version of Blue Eyes. Um, we're not going to see this kind of the ghost technology again, I think. Yeah. Um, or at least in this quality, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely right. not. I, I so. agree. This, this, this looks like those original ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have Duelist 6 and Duelist 4. So we have Harpy's Feather Duster. And then we have Dark Magician Girl. This is a crazy pop, right? It is very, very high pop. The price also fell uh, a lot. So yeah. when I yeah, so when I say you know like pr when we're talking about prominent OCG dark magician girls, mm -hmm. like that that's why I mentioned the only strictly um, original artwork. Because yeah. if we're not talking about original art, I think this is like one of the top ones because the 3D effect on this is amazing. it's crazy. Yeah, yes. like it's like really jumping off the screen. In yes. the card. Yeah, and I think this is one of the first kind of like non prize um, ghost dark magician girls. So. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Some more of, like I said, man, I think that this is some <laughs> of the best looking cards I've ever seen. Like, yeah. look at the red text on this. This is crazy. I, I, always, I love this. I always wanted an alternate artwork or OG artwork, depending on how you look at it, yeah. right? Of the Harpy Feather Duster, such a nostalgic card, right? Yeah. Very powerful back in the days. Um, and uh, I think those are one of the pretty, really um, high rarity ones yeah. to have. So, this is crazy. Yeah. Man, I'm definitely going to collect these. Yeah. I, th I think the fact that it's like a contained set, yes. you know, never going to see this layout ever again, never going to see red text with the stamp again. Yep. Like it has everything going for it and they release pretty much every iconic card. Yes. Right? Yes. Like we have original art Dark Magician, original art SDK, Stardust, 
Black Rose. Every single card is 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 available in this rarity. Like they did an amazing job, honestly. <laughs> like they killed it on this. Yeah. So if nothing else, collecting you know the iconic ones of the twentieth secret, yeah. I think would be a good idea. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Dark Magician Girl. These are promos. These are actually relatively modern promos. Yes. This is one of my favorite promos in the past, like five to six years probably yeah yeah this is insane yeah obviously the kaiba <laughs> you know blue eyes um fast star repoint reprint mm -hmm. right um crazy aesthetics um i used to have a playset of these in 10. yeah uh i kind of like started selling way uh the couple other ones just because i started like to realize i kind of fell out of love with japanese text um your cards really if i can't really read them it started to bother me more and more um just because in the beginning i really liked some lot of collected OCG cards because either one they were like you know the first prints right mm -hmm. like the god cards or they existed in or the ultimate reprints right because they mm -hmm. only exist in OCG yeah, yeah. Uh, so really you really don't have another choice right very interesting yeah hmm. um, and I think I started selling them when they announced the TCG yeah, version of the kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah interesting yeah very interesting. I, I think for me um, when it comes to collecting OCG it has to be either uh, like series one layout right or it has to be completely exclusive to the ocg right like i can't collect an ocg like for example ultimate rares yep. from like tlm to like yeah stone yeah i can't be collecting ocg because there's like a tcg variant that exists exactly right, right? yeah exactly and uh for me like series one is like the only one where i draw the exception because like series one like i said like the layout the is portrait just so layout. insane yeah right yeah. That, that's the only reason i make it, these exceptions but otherwise i i pretty much agree with you i would never collect like a ocg card over a tcg if if it's like if the tcg is within my budget yeah yeah and then this is like the promo from the video game. This one is super high pop. These are both in like the thousands probably. Uh, this is like at least three, 4,000 PSA 10 for sure. Yep. And then this one is... The funny thing... And it's still holding. Like it's, it's still, still holding a hundred bucks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the Dark Magician Girl, it's so weird because it's the first Rush Duel Dark Magician Girl, mm -hmm. right? So that kind of gives it some like you know, prominence. Yeah. Um, the other one being, it's so weird, even though it's extremely high pop, um, the cards just come out dinged and damaged all the time. Yeah, so I don't understand is, yeah. how. So they must have released like millions. Yeah. Like they, they, this, this, because I remember I opened three packs and every single one of them had like five. a dent. They were all dented. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Next up, we're going to go into. Ooh. Okay. So here we have a Dark Magician Girl from Speed Duel. Yes. I, I've raved about Speed Duel before. You guys have seen. I said that this is probably. The best secret rare in modern cards. To be honest with you, if it wasn't for the Hollow Stars, I would say that this is actually rivaling the original MFC because the card saturation is unbelievable. It really looks incredible. Um, highly recommend it for any budget collector. I think that this is a great, great value option. And you get a lot of cards. So like here, for example, you have the Slifer in secret rare. Incredible, incredible Hollow Foil pattern. Unbelievable. And then you have Obelisk as well. Again, budget options for those who are looking to collect without you know breaking the bank. Uh, here you have, again, more Speed Duel secret rares like Wing Dragon of Raw, Air Knight Parsha. Let me show you some more. Yeah, I here. just love the new uh, Speed Duels, especially the secrets. Yeah. Um, just because the foil pops like they never, I have never seen like pop like that before. Yeah. So consistently and uniformly. Yeah, this right. is crazy. And you kind of like also get that kind of like collection yeah. uh, feel, right? Because you kind of, they're kind of more or less. the whole set. Exactly, right? Yeah. They're a bit more isolated, right, than most. So, yeah. yeah. And th because these don't bleed over, right? It's like that 20th anniversary thing, right? Where it's like a contained set. You know, you know how many cards you can check off. It's not like ultra rares, for example, where the set is like so massive. Uh, and, and like the collection goal is so immense where it, it's kind of intimidating with speed duel with that 20th anniversary because you know okay like speed duel a new set comes out an extra another 25 cards i have to collect every single one of them is a couple bucks like perfect collection <laughs> perfect collection and like this is actually a great option for value collectors and i think that i think that they'll age very well i mean some yeah. of them have really aged well like the yeah that's the first city, set right? yeah the like first the battle, battle city, city went, went crazy so yeah, yeah. 
Um, and the aesthetics, I think, just overall underappreciated. They're yeah. just like so insanely beautiful for how cheap they are. Definitely, yeah. definitely agree. Yeah. So that's Speed Duel. Moving on, we have. Oh man. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For some reason, he decided to collect this. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Um, these look fantastic in their OCG counterparts. I don't know for anybody who dis really dislikes, you know, the premium gold uh, rarity. Um, check out the OCG version, the counterparts. They look immaculate. Oh, yeah. The quality is flawless. Uh, everything about them is like, you know, fire. Um, and then somehow when it came to TCG, uh, Konami was just like, you know what, like, let's just like, whatever, we're going to make it, you know, uh, pump it out as much as we could. Uh, and bam, we got a, you know, really, really, really bad side of it. The qualities were really bad. Um, so in a way, uh, getting PSA 10s on these yeah, actually, it is, it is, actually is quite, pretty hard. Quite challenging. Yeah. It's quite, quite hard. Yeah. Well, what the thing I think that pissed me off the most about Maximum Gold is the fact that they took one of the best sets, Prismatic Art Collection, and they turned it into gold. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Prismatic Art Collection is a set that came out, I think, 2021 or 20, 2019. And they had pretty much alternate arts for 40 cards. They released a brand new Red Eyes, probably the best Red Eyes, in my opinion, best Red Eyes artwork. They released a brand new Apollosa, brand new IP Mascarena. And the OCG got them in Starlight Rare. We got them in freaking Maximum Gold, like that, <laughs> to pour salt on the wound. Like that, that's the main problem I have. Like, okay, they don't want to do a good job on the gold rarity, fine, but don't waste like these incredible alternate arts on this on, I, on gold cards, bro. I remember the release of Pack One vividly. I really, really wanted the alternate work, artwork IP um, uh, Mascarina. Yeah. It, 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 Kind of came, it started retailing and the rock car was still retailing for about a thousand dollars. I was like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I really want it, but I can't. Yeah, that, that's it came down a little bit, but yeah. it's it's still very it's still soft, holding, or... holding yes. very strong, especially yes. like the alternate arts, bro. Like yes. those cards do really well. The boxes started hitting like three, four hundred bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, it, and it was, it, it was doing really well even after directly after the 20th secret yeah. release on a lot of mm -hmm. like the prints. Yep, um, so it was, yeah, it was crazy. I, I think. I think for the non-alternates, uh, it's still 20th, that's the peak rarity, right? Yes. Like IP, for example. Exactly. Yeah. For example, if you want a, like a high rarity alternate artist, yeah. right, you kind of have to look to pack one. Here we have, um, oh, I know. So this card is actually quite difficult to grade. It's not really like crazy pop. And yeah. this is the first release of this artwork, correct? I saw your collection. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I got to have this too. Um, just because, you know, I really did enjoy the movie. I think it's a good nostalgic, right? It's yeah. the first print of the artwork, right? Yeah. The very, very first print, right? The yeah. Ultra came first. Correct, yeah. Um, I bought this uh, and it was misgraded. Um, really? Yeah. It was mislabeled as a secret. Um, so. Oh, and so you had to send it in? Yes, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Here we have the World Superstars, right? Yes. Um, among all the prize cards, yeah. uh, you know, aside from, you know, uh, Eternia, Tear, and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I think the Blue Eyes and the Dark Magician are, you know, really, really cool. Some of your favorites, right? yeah. Some of my favorites, yeah. And they come in Prismatic Secret, yeah. uh, which I think I low-key like more than Supers and Ultra Essence, right? So. Very interesting. Yeah. And it's nice because the, the no hollow full of stars. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. They were printed just early enough. Yeah, 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 just early. And the first edition stamp is still at the top. Yes, exactly. Really nice. I really like that part. Yeah. 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 Dark Magician Growth goes from the past, Haunted Mine. Um, okay, so I don't know what this is. <laughs> Why do you have this in PSA? <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, probably just because I can't afford the uh, Secret Rare version. <laughs> the <laughs> the Retro Pack yeah, version. Yeah, the version, yes. <laughs> Um, it's so hard to find. Is it a, nostalgic to you or something? Or very, or, very. Yeah. Um, so it's one of one of the nostalgic cards when I played uh, back in the days. It was one of those like you know kind of troll decks, right? Mm -hmm. Where you kind of like flip the deck on its head. Um, so I think this was like very, very nostalgic. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted this card. Uh, so I saw a PSA ten. I was like, okay, might as well. <laughs> and these are actually quite difficult to grade. I don't know if you know this. They come in the booklets. Yes, yes. They're, so they're they're pro really these were good. promos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like these came out of a pack and you can yeah. just like grade them a thousand yeah. copies. Very nice. And then here, um, 
are you planning to get tens? Are you gonna try and get tens, or are you like what, are you, uh, what are you collecting now? By the way, are you still in slabs, or are you more? Uh, uh, so now I'm in slabs mostly for cars. My top kind of top five, top mm. ten kind of favorite cars, right? So even though I might really like blue eyes or dark magician girl or something like that, I wouldn't really kind of like bother mm. uh, going above it. Uh, you'll see more in the slab section, mm -hmm. uh, in the other slabs. Yeah. Um, I do have a ten on the dark magician girl. I don't have a 10 on a blue eye just because for some god forbid reason yeah. that this is impossible. It's I graded it like, like under pop five, right? Under probably under 10, under under, 10, under, 10, under five. Um, and one of the tens I saw that was like briefly listed on eBay, the corners were like broken. Terrible, right? they, they were broken. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I, I so that one was really nice because I knew it was U foil. That's why you knew mm. the back yeah, corners yeah. were broken. So I actually bought a case. I bought a U case. Okay. Cracked it. Got a blue eyes, sent in along with my five other copies. They all came back like A's and nines. Oh shit! I got really depressed. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Struggles of grading right there. Yeah. So I kind of give up on the blue eyes. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, here's the miniature one. Uh, this is like the one that houses, I think, twenty cards instead of sixty. Uh, we're gonna get into that now since the first one is near done. All right, so we have. A reprint Dark Magician of Chaos from Korea. Now, is this one? Oh, this is a 2019 reprint. What, what's the point in owning this? It's just like, I, I remember you told me something about DMOC, and we're gonna get to that. Don't, don't spoil, but is this like, are you planning to pursue PSA 10s? This is a consolation prize because an Invasion of Chaos in Korean edition, in first edition, yeah. does not exist in 10. I see, I see. Okay, yeah. okay, fair enough. There's about four, I think, Dark Magician of Chaos graded in uh, Korean yeah. in the first edition. Um, the highest pop uh, was nine. Nine. Right, a 10 doesn't exist. So this is like my consolation prize. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. enough. Placeholder. <laughs> Placeholder. <laughs> All right, and then we have, oh, so this is Asian English. Holy smokes, what is this pop? That's crazy. Yes, yes. So this card is Holy Yata Grass is one of those like really, really kind of like, you know, nostalgic cards, right? Um, and for some reason or another, this card in the DM era sets, yeah. um, the secret foil just pops like no other. Yeah. Uh, and even more so on the Asian English mm -hmm. version, right? Where yeah. it's reverse secret. It's crazy. Yeah, so I had to have that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Solemn Judgment, first edition MRD. The original Just Say No. <laughs> This is the Pharaoh Rare. Holy. The secret Pharaoh Rare. Look so, at the pop on this. So this just, uh, so Chain of Heart is one of my uh, top five favorites. Mm, um, I see. Right, favorite cards, right? Um, and, you know, a special high rating. I just mm -hmm. kind of had to have it. Interesting. Yeah. Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos, and this is also Pharaoh Rare, right? Yes. This artwork is crazy. Yes, I really like, so I typically don't really like the retrains on a lot of like the OG mm -hmm. cards, yeah. but I think this is one of the exceptions, I think, yeah. um, just because the artwork, um, the fact, uh, the kind of like meta placement, mm -hmm. um, everything about it is just like very yeah, nostalgic. Just hits. Yeah. Eight, oh, wow, this is nice. This is expensive. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is a pricey card. Yeah. This is Asian English Breaker, the Magical Warrior. Bro, this card looks incredible. Yes. What is this? Look at the colors on this. Yes. So something about Asian English uh, Ultra Foil on the original DM sets yeah. is that they pop holistically um, yeah. on the artwork. Whereas as opposed to NA or EU, Mm -hmm. um, the foils are partially highlighted when you, yeah. you know, we kind of like go them over light under lights. Yeah. Um, but the Asian English edition, they just pop holistically. This is crazy. Here we have Adidas collab, Dark Magician. I think this card like is so beautiful, man. I think they did an incredible job on it. Yeah. And obviously the Adidas stamp is one of a kind, yeah. right? I, are we going to see another? I don't know. So, you know, you kind of had to get it in the meantime. I, I love this card. I think it's so nice. I have a whole page of this in my binder, but it's a shame that they made so many. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's also partially okay just because they all came out um, dinged. Dinged, <laughs> yes. right, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Let me check this one. Yeah, this, I, is, this is clean. I graded about, I think, 10 of these. Yeah. Um, there were some of them were dinged in a way that I didn't even see them before I sent yeah. them in, right? And obviously the PSA graders caught them. 
Yeah. Right. So I got like several nines, several eights, some sixes. Um, and they caught me off guard a lot. Yeah. Right. I thought they were all really minty. Um, only one of them came up back, came back ten. So thankfully, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I heard a lot of people. I know my buddy, he's something like 25 and he only got 110. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Here we have the collector rare Stardust Dragon. This was, was this like one of the things that brought you back? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, this uh, set was kind of released, you know, back in 2020, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's introduction of collector rares. Mm -hmm. uh, and because the first set, the collection rarity is actually printed differently than all the sets that come out after. Uh, because the foil, they just pop a little bit more than others. Yeah, um, I, I feel like it has more um, like hollow foil per se. Like, yes. Uh, if that yes. makes sense. Like, exactly. it, it, like, for example, like his chest piece here. Like, look at that pop. This is really nice, actually. Yeah. Uh, and on top of it, just, you know, being Stardust, Stardust one of my too. top five cards. Of course. Kind of have to have it. So. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Let's go next. We have. Sweepstakes, Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon. This is a beautiful card. I think it's kind of, these are kind of underrated. Uh, well, not maybe not this one, but like the other ones. The other ones are so cheap. They're very cheap. They like, came out when they debuted. Uh, I think they were up to a thousand bucks for raw copies and something yeah, like that. And now it's like hundred. Now it's like twenty two hundred bucks Jeez. each. I think yeah, I agree. I think they're very underrated. Blue text, secret yeah. rare, promos. One more here, ask for. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, this, these are ones like I saw this one for like 180. Like that's crazy. They're yeah. limited to like a thousand copies, right? Or yeah, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You have two of them. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. This is nice. What do you What do you think this one compared to Asian English? I think <laughs> I'm gonna. That... I'm gonna. I bought that Asian English off of you. Um, <laughs> I'm bought another one. I'm yeah. definitely gonna like, weird, send them in for grading, so we'll see. <laughs> the I, I felt like the Asian English is just easier to read. Like yes. This one, this one, like the name, like yes. it's unreadable. When the you look at Asian it. English quarter century rares, um, the text uh, actually reflect a reflect a silver whitish hue under mm -hmm. light, as opposed to kind of like a yellow text. I see. Even though they're both kind of like gold, right? Mm -hmm. Sparkly gold, and obviously the gold on uh, the gold text on Asian English is a little bit more. Um, concentrated mm -hmm. um, so they come out a little bit more darker so yeah. easier to read yeah yeah these are nice but again you know it's black rose and it's stardust you kind of have to have it so really really nice cards beautiful crystal revenge yada garasu um you know high starlight friends of you know dm era cards how do you have it uh one of the favorites from back in the days um, and it really just, you know, Starlight just pops really nicely. So, yeah, yeah. I think these are really underrated too. These are, these are really, like, really these cheap. These are pretty these much days. like raw price, right? In yeah. The, these are really, really cheap these days. Yeah. yeah. So definitely recommend picking them up if you can. Yeah. So Exodia pieces, some of them hit under a hundred dollars. They are. The limbs That's are a hundred. The limbs are about a hundred bucks each. That's crazy. Yeah. And then we have not one, not two, not three. <laughs> we have four animation chronicles what's up with this is this like your favorite like this is, is this probably like a... one of my favorite modern prints of a you know nostalgic car like mm -hmm. probably like top top three top two right yeah. um so first of all these are like beautiful beautiful starlight rarities right prismatic mm -hmm. secrets um the text is very special you know in terms of mm -hmm. font um the uh effect box yeah. Uh, is actually text uh, attributed to like the older initial you yep. know prize card reprints of Blue Eyes, yep. um, and I think on top of the, all of that, uh, it kind of like calls back to the GBI uh, God cards, where the back is uh, OCG and the front is English. Mm, interesting. How many do you, how many you know Yu Gi Oh cards do you see are like that? Right. Yeah. So very very interesting. I think this card is really nice. It has a lot of identity. It has a lot going for it too. Um, I just wish they didn't make so many of them. That's that's the main problem. I think if I, they short printed it like the Rush Duel Blue Eyes. Right. I actually thought they were kind of like I don't think they were short printed, but I think initially they're so really one, hard to pull. One per case. One per case. Yeah. yeah. It's just that who knew they released so many cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Beautiful card though. These fell like if you're looking for a budget, nice collectible Blue Eyes, 
I think you can get this for like 300 bucks. Now. These go, yeah. yeah. So a PSA 10 goes for about 300 bucks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you can definitely pick these up for, for a very, very nice price, in my opinion, for what they are. All right, next box. So what's the story with DMOC? Why is, uh, I, okay, let me show you guys what I mean by <laughs> what's the story. <laughs> Look at this, guys. So I have PSA 10, in PSA 10 of about every single higher rarity of Dark Magician of Chaos ever printed. Um, it's my number one card, number mm -hmm. one favorite card, right? Over Stardust, over Dark Magician Grow, over whatever you want to, mm -hmm. you know, name it. Um, one of the OG era cards uh, from back in the days on play hook, uh, Playground Yu-Gi-Oh days. Mm -hmm. um, amazing effect back in the days, uh, super, super cool artwork um, and the chaos theme, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just has everything about going for it. I, I agree with you. I think this is one of the best cards ever made, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like the ultimate rare is bananas. Yeah, and the ultimate rare is definitely probably my fa favorite just because the way it pops, it just like no, like no other. So. And we'll never get this ever. We'll never ever get it in the, in the TCG like this. <sighs> I, even, if, even if they give us like an OTS, like it doesn't even matter. I, I'd be okay if they just give us a secret print, honestly, secret. in TCG. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, for some reason, just don't like printing. I think these should have gone in the Toon Chaos release, along with, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Chaos mm -hmm. Emperor and like Black Luster. Collector Luster. Rare, right? Exactly, in Collector Rare. Um, yeah. Or in Modern Starlight or anything like that. I pray. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know what's, what's happening. So. That's beautiful, though. Yeah. That's amazing. Are you missing any? Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm missing the Korean first edition. Korean that's the only kind of like chase, I think. Um, mm -hmm. That's like, you know, very, very short printed just because the, any Korean Yu-Gi-Oh card back in the days are, you know, very short, yeah. short supply. Um, but unfortunately, a 10 doesn't exist. So. Interesting. Beautiful. Incredible. I love species collectors, man. <laughs> People who collect just like one type, that's, that's my favorite. <laughs> All right. And I have 10. So, you know, it goes perfectly perfect, in a yeah. layer of foam uh, kind of <laughs> inserts. Yeah. Perfect. That was the plan. Here we have Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End, and this is Asian English. The way that I know is obviously because of the reverse foil, which is exclusive to Asian English cards. You can see that the foil goes from this corner to this corner instead of from here to here, which is what it regular. Oh man, I just showed a really nice card under this. Anyway, <laughs> what's the idea behind this? Yeah, top, again, you know, top five cards, right? Along with DMOC, along with Stardust, Black Rose, Change of Callback and stuff. Mm. Um, this is like probably my top two, top three cards. Um, and, you know, uh, the original Invasion of Chaos in Asian English, very short printed. Uh, I, I saw it and I just kind of had to grab it, right? I don't think it's going to pop up very often. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love the reverse secret foiling. Uh, yeah. It just makes it so much that much more special, I think. And exclusive, yeah. And exclusive, yeah, yeah. exactly. So. Really, really nice. All right, here is one of my favorite cards, man. This is, oh, like this is great, bro. This card is so crazy that people in the TCG when they play gold format, they end up oh, using this as some of the high rarities. Wow. Yeah, like I saw this so many times. Look at this card. This is insane, man. Yeah. So. Obviously, this isn't even my top five, to be honest, yeah. but just the artwork, um, you know, the nostalgic, yeah. um, everything about it just has, you know, it's the foil. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anything like this again. This is unbelievable. Yeah. This is actually one of the... Oh, man. <laughs> and for one of the, you know, the OCG Ultimate uh, Rares uh, in PSA 10, the pop isn't actually that crazy uh, for such an like old card. 150 or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely like, you know, yeah. less than certain numbers. So. Yeah. I think it is. I think it, this deserves every everything that like all the praise. To be honest with you, this is an unbelievable card. Too. Yes, for sure. MRD, uh, your favorite, right? Top five. Yeah. Had to have it. Beautiful card for sure. Yeah. PSA ten. This is a really nice card, man. Yeah. I, I I want to pick one of these up. I'm just waiting for the price to come down a little bit more. It's not. It's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I want. I want. I'm looking for like six, seven hundred PSA because I think PSA uh, raw near mint is around four hundred now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And PSA ten, you'll probably have to go about above eight hundred, nine hundred, right? Yeah. Maybe four yeah. digits. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, right now it's hovering around like a thousand dollars. So I'm, I'm just gonna keep waiting. But 
Here's the two of them. This one's actually harder to grade than this. I don't know yes. if you noticed that the pop is lower on this. Than it this. was lower, yes. Yeah. Um, and fun fact, when I had these two graded, um, when I got the 10 back, yeah. they were about under, uh, my, the Black Rose was under five pop. Wow. Uh, and the Stardust was under 10. Yeah. So I had the earlier kind of yeah. like PSA. Interesting. Thing. Yeah. I bought them pretty much on release. So. This is one of my favorites. I, I like this one more than this in terms of art, just because like they, they didn't hollow foil the Stardust Dragon himself. Right. Right. Here, everything is holographic. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I still think that this is a gorgeous card. I, and I really like that it's hard to grade because this has centering issues. Yes. Like yes. a lot even of these are off center. If you kind of take a closer look, even the copy I have here isn't yeah. perfectly centered. So yeah. I was actually very or worried when I sent them in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but thankfully, it wasn't too, um, too bad. Yeah, but these definitely need like the rainbow print. Like this pattern, it needs that rainbow rainbow text. This is crazy. Starlights are amazing, yeah. man. Starlights are actually incredible cards. Yeah, yeah. I Modern Ghost. Them. Here we have, okay, so some of you guys might not recognize what this is. This is a metal dark magician girl. Uh, how was this given out? Do you know? Uh, uh, I think these were probably some kind of like um, lottery, raffle. Maybe, yeah. yeah, like, you know, and every other kind of like, you know, promo releasing OTG. Yeah. Um, they're probably kind of lotto kind of price based. Um, there were limited 10,000 copies, I think, or yes. so. Yeah, there's like 10,000 copies. 10,000 copies, course, yeah. right? Um, and they all came out in similar to the, you know, Platinum Blue Eyes yeah. and Dark Magician. Scratches and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The metal wasn't, it, higher rare, it's higher quality than TGG counterparts for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Beautiful card, man. Yeah. And the this is what, like 1,000, 1,500 maybe? It varies. It depends on kind of like who you ask, because they don't really pop up that often. Yeah. Um, the rock card is like the rock card is very something? the rock card is very affordable. It's yeah. about 500, 600 ish. Mm. Um, so I bought it raw and graded it myself. So. Oh, I see. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Beautiful card. Yeah. Wow. The way it pops under light uh, yeah. with the metallic, you know. Um, and this goes material. great with like the the duelist box, blue eyes, and dark magician stainless steel as well that they released. Yeah, yeah. And then they just recently released a Gaia as well for the prize. I don't know if you oh, saw Oh, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, it's like, well, it's prize though. It's like $5,000. Oh, I'll figure. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a Red Eyes too. The Red Eyes is also dumb expensive though. It's really? Like, oh, it's like know. a YCS. Uh, the Gaia is like sort of similar to like YCS prize card. Right. So. Um, ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so like the I winners think... of Japanese YCS got that Gaia. I see, I see. Because yeah. I think I think the Dark Magician girl and the, you know, the Bandai Dark Magician, right? Yes. They were all kind of like, you know, more like mass releases, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So more, you know, obtainable. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. So. yeah, the Gaia and the Red, the red Eyes, I, I know because like, uh, they come in like a black, it's like the, it's like the case that you see in the Prismatic God Box. Ah, okay. But it's, uh, but it's just plain black. I see. And yeah, it's. I see. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about the price card because like I always worry like how replicatable these are. Right. You know what I mean? Especially because uh, metal, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's hard for me to put like thousands of dollars behind like a prize card of that. But right, right. I mean, I understand why people like them though. I, it's, yeah. it's, I think the the blue eyes and the dark magician are must haves. Yeah. I think for budget collectors, like imagine. And it feels really nice in the hand. Like I don't know if you've ever held like a, the st the steel. Oh, you have. You graded I did. This, right? I I took this out. Yeah, yeah. I graded it feels nice, right? It, is. Like, hold it on. is. It feels so yeah, nice. Very weighty. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Here's Dark Magician Girl PSA ten. You think that this is overpriced for what it is? If we actually talk about quality, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, right? I think the entire Ghost of the Past one and two were kind of like you know flops in a way, <laughs> um, mostly two, I think. I yeah. think even Dark Magician uh, from one was actually um, probably actually better quality than most people expected. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, but two, they just like it's really screwed boxed, up on yeah. the qualities. Yeah, you can see it's off center here. Yeah, this is an NA copy, so yeah. yeah. Interesting. But again, you know, Dark Magician Girl is a ten. What more no, can I get it. <laughs> This is, I think this card is quite underrated. Uh, like, uh, okay, it's not underrated. It's appropriately rated. Like right now, I think it's, in terms of price, three hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. This card is hard to pull. Like, it's, it's hard it's, to pull and it's hard to grade. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like definitely. I mean, I don't know if PSA tens are worth fifteen hundred. Like, <laughs> that, that is is kind of crazy to me. But I I think for for the raw price, I I respect it at three hundred bucks because. This, this definitely surprised me. I, I was not expecting it to look this good in person, 
And I mean, in my video, like I, I shit on Pharaoh Rares, but then when I saw them in person, I was like, I was like, wow, like they actually look really nice. <laughs> yeah, so, the more kind of recent secret Pharaoh Rares, they pop yeah. out really, really well. Yeah, like right? the Mama, right? The, as, uh, yeah, like yeah, Mason, maybe, exactly. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, the original kind of like King's yeah. Core release, so. This is really nice. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably pick up a, a raw copy yeah. eventually. Yeah. Uh, nice. And if you love that, you're gonna love this. Yeah, so. this is nice. Yeah, this is also the secret rare blue eyes. It's really, really nice. Oh. Yeah. Definitely recommend. I'm it. kind of blown away to be honest. Like, this is the first time I've seen this one. Oh, these, yeah. These are really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the pair of collector rare, uh, the Chaos cards. Yeah. Right, first collectors. Mm -hmm. um, they pop out really nicely under certain angles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, even from here. Look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah, these are really nice. Yeah. All right, so you had some slabs here that were like Pokemon based. I wanted to leave them till the end. So what is, <laughs> what are these about? Like, well, yeah, yeah. When people talk about TCG and collecting in general, you know, you can't really, uh, you can talk about Yu-Gi-Oh all you want, but at the end of the day, you know, Pokemon is still the biggest, right? In our, <laughs> yeah. in our hobby. Right? Absolutely. Uh, everybody plays Pokemon back in the days and, you know, me included. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mew is my favorite Pokemon. Yeah. Right. So I, when I saw these, when I was collecting Yu-Gi-Oh, I saw these by chance, all right, on, on kind of like just by advertisements. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, that looks really good. Let me pick that up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Do you so, plan on collecting more or? I do. I do. Yeah. Um, but I'm not collecting um, these Pokemon in the same way I do with the Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm only collecting new, right? Favorite card only. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm only collecting artworks that I really like. So if you didn't notice, these are really some of the really nice um, shots yeah. of Mew, I think. And it um, looks most like the anime. Yeah, exactly. Which is, right. Which is like, like the, I, I've seen like some really some. Yeah, some of the older, stuff. especially older, right? More yeah. probably like prized um, uh, Mew hearts. Yeah, uh, like some abstract. The Mew's artwork are just like <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, and I don't really want it. So yeah, um, I, I agree with you. I, yeah. Like this looks exactly like from the movie, right? Exactly. So yeah. I, I get what you're seeing here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a you know like boomer guy. Uh, I yeah. really only really like Pokemon, uh, you know, up to the first three gens. Yeah. Right, and then Mew, I think to me it was the OG, um, kind of like mystic, kind of like god level yeah. kind of Pokemon. So, Makes sense. Yeah, it's these are really. Are any of these like expensive? Uh, I don't think that much. Uh, they're all fairly affordable. Um, mostly like uh under hundred bucks. Under right, some under fifty. Yeah. But the last one, the kind of like, that one probably this goes one? for about yeah. That one probably goes for about two hundred, three hundred ish, depending yeah. on who you ask. Interesting. Because the foil is really interesting. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. This is really beautiful, man. Yeah. Amazing. All right, so that's his slab collection, okay? And, you know, I, I'm a binder guy, so we definitely have to get to that. But before we open up the binders, I want to show you guys. He has um, a very controversial card here. We have the <laughs> Masterpiece Platinum Blue Eyes. Uh, so, like, honestly, I... I I was going to say, like, he wouldn't be crazy enough to grade this, but after I saw that you graded the Dark Magician Girl, <laughs> uh, is this something that you'd ever grade? You caught me. I thought about grading this. <laughs> oh, I, I really did. I really did. Um, but I, when I took a look, you know, took a look up close, yeah. um, I realized, okay, this is your typical TCG quality finish, quality mm -hmm. control. Um, no way are these gonna, ever going to get tens. Uh, I will be very surprised if we even get a nine uh, at some point. Yeah. So I know there were some people who graded these and got a seven. Um, Are there any tens in the pop report? No, no, no way, no, no. no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they um, have they have serious issues in terms of like scratches and stuff. Yes, uh, as opposed to their you know like OCG counterparts where they do metal finish really really well. Yeah, so, yeah. Beautiful. This is a beautiful card though. It like, is. It's a it's a really nice display. For it sure. is. Um, and I caught a retail price. So oh, I, you got a retail. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So I got it for a thousand dollars on release. Um, so that wasn't too bad. But if you ask me to buy for you know three thousand, two thousand, maybe not. So, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Very beautiful. All right. So that's everything non-binder. Now let's do some movie magic and get his binders over here. In three, two, one. All right, so I see you have a garden of binder here. <laughs> yeah, uh, no plug or anything, but these are maybe some of the best binders uh, on the market. So <laughs> Shout yeah. out to you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you guys want to pick some of these up, they're available at strictlysealed.com. You're not going to find this colorway anymore, but you'll probably find the others at strictlysealed.com, and you'll be able to pick up sleeves as well. All right, let's get into the binder collection. 
So here we have God cards. Yeah. So first page, uh, I kind of like thought it was neat that there were so many variants in kind of like artworks, yeah. right? So I wanted a secret rare print of um, all of them. So makes sense. Yeah. These are really nice. I really like this slide for artwork. Oh yeah. The twentieth anniversary is dumb expensive for this. Like it's like three, four hundred. Yeah, bucks. yeah. You know, if it wasn't if it wasn't <laughs> Japanese hex, I probably would have liked to buy that. Interesting. <laughs> Here we have. Um, yeah. Next. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Here we have the Speed Duel. I told you guys, man, like Speed Duel is like some of the best stuff that you can collect. Yeah, and they look really nice in, in the binder um, when you have like in them in play sets, uh, in a page. Um, cannot rec recommend them enough. Beautiful. Some more Speed Duel. Yeah, I have pretty much the secret uh, speed duels of all the kind of like nostalgic and iconic yeah. cards, right? Yeah. Um, and so some awesome. prints I like, just comes in secret rare for the first time in English prints. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like the warrior lady. The warrior lady, right? warrior lady, all that. So yeah. this is so nice. Yeah, I think the cyber dragons were really underrated too. So. Beautiful. Uh, and we go from like kind of older sets to more of the newer sets. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a couple of cases of these. I set them back because I felt like the cards are, are so nice in there. Yeah. Yeah. And the quality control on them aren't exactly amazing either. Um, yeah. So kind of like uh, having them thing earlier on is like a really good, um, yeah. nice collection. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then we get into some of the quarter century secrets, uh, like I mentioned before, one Beautiful. of my favorites. Um, and they just pop really well too. So just don't like it any. <laughs> wow. These are really nice. Yeah. Bro, like look the, at this. I love I love like I told you guys like I, one day I'm going to show you guys my nine pocket binders where like I have like one page for every card. He has exactly this. Like it's yeah. so nice to look at, man. The middle <laughs> ones are U prints as well. So they come in a darker shade uh, than your any counterparts. So do these have corner issues? They do. As they everyone. Do yeah. yeah. Interesting. Here we have the 25th Legendary Collection. Yeah. These are more tin promos, yeah? Yeah, still got to get the quarter century collection yeah, complete. Um, again, wow, favorite nice. secrets. Uh, I still need to pick up some more quarter century uh, Chindo parts. So. Oh, you're going to get a whole page here. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Are you gonna get the other rarities? Uh, no, actually, I so I initially I was really hyped about you know the prismatic collector, prismatic ultimate, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but when you kind of like look at them in a the hand, yeah, um, e they either don't pop all that well, mm -hmm. um, or um, they just uh, don't aren't textured enough. I think. I see. Um, so I actually ironically think that quarter centuries will do the best, and they look the best. Yeah. So. I, I agree with you. I, I do think that this. Yeah. This I just haven't had to have these because you know this change of pardon. So. Okay. Fair enough. And I should have uh, some more quarter century of these copies too. So. Mm. Interesting. Oh wow! Can this I is a this fake. Oh, <laughs> this is a fake blue eyes SM thirty one. Damn, this yeah. is. But it's really blue, so. Bro, this looks amazing. It what does, right? <laughs> I mean, the text is off, but the yeah. image, like the, the texture, is also off when you feel it in the hand. Yeah, but, yeah. The back looks immaculate. Wait, this is a real card on the yeah. back. Yeah. So the what they just stuck it on? I have no is clue. This, yeah, it's a sticker. Uh, probably. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was like kind of probably starstruck there, bro. Can't go from the back, probably. I can go from the back. Okay. Yeah. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lost this art, nice. right? English this prints. Nice. Uh, this deserves a page. I agree. I, yeah. I think these are underrated. Yeah, I love it. So, uh, first artwork. I think this is really nice kind of artwork for Dark Magic. This is my favorite artwork. For oh, really? I, I like this even more than the yeah, OG. I think this looks incredible. Uh -huh. I, I don't like this rarity. I, right. I hope that they give us like a, a juicy rarity mm -hmm. one day. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm really looking forward to the new OCG artwork. I don't know if you saw that one. No, I didn't. Um, the Unity released. There's a Unity oh, yeah, and Pride. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I think that'll be really Bro, nice. Bro, I'm ordering that set, man. <laughs> I'm ordering that set. Yeah. Uh, some of the OCG. So nice. Yeah, and these are some of the OCG cards. Um, yeah. The G4 Secrets. Uh, and The Prismatics. Yeah, and the Ghost uh, Raw, Raw in yeah. the new technology. So. 
This is a really nice card too. Yeah. I, it's a shame. I wish that all the limbs can be ultimate rares yeah. as well. So I, uh, so I need to sl still slot in a copy of Gemini Elf. Um, okay. Yeah, and another here. ultimate rare here. So. This is one of my favorite cards. You guys <laughs> have to see this. This card. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Okay, it's not showing as nice as I thought on camera, but it is gorgeous. Yeah. This um, is. We're not gonna see MDs like like classic ultimate rares uh, on the especially on the DM cards again. So you kind of you kind of have to collect these. Yeah. Yeah. I I love these. I think so nice. Yeah. Oh, there's the there's the twentieth century. So this is the first Starlight Stardust. I love that about this thing. Yeah, the red text is really nice on like a white border, I think. Yeah. So. So nice. And I also have some uh, Three Kingdoms uh, uh, OSP cards, um, as well as the Yu-Gi-Oh! Rings. Mm. Yeah. It is 20th as well. Yeah. I love that. I love the red text. As soon as I see red text, I know it's 20th. That's so <laughs> sick. I. Yeah, yeah. Watch, I'm going to collect them. <laughs> there, there's a new series for you guys. <laughs> this is really nice. Korean cards, man. This if you're is a, a budget collector. The, yeah, the, I bought it just to check it out. Um, yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah, The ultimate rare following. Oh, this is the uncensored DMG. Yeah, got a playset. I showed this in the, in the Asian English video. Throw it up at Yeah, you have the uncensored <laughs> DMG and uncensored yeah. Gemini Elf. So. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Here's the 25th reprint, mm -hmm. um, just kind of just commemorate, you know, uh, yeah. and I think it makes it a bit of special, right, with the new kind of like layout. The, yeah. um, I actually wanted to make a video on why some of these prices are actually eclipsing the original ones, right, right, yeah, yeah, especially I, LOB, I think yeah. more so just LOB. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the 25th secret, uh, the secret rares are mm -hmm. actually really nice. They're really too. well made, yeah. yeah, they're really nice, I agree. So that goes that finder. That's the Garden of Blue. All right. Some more movie magic. Three, two, one. All right. So this is your heavy hitter binder, you said? This is my main binder. Okay. Uh, goes into the Moonlight binder, obviously, because <laughs> Moonlight is the best colorway on our original release. So you yeah, know what it is. Amazing. Yeah. All right, so Trihorn Dragon here, I see reverse foils. We have reverse foils and the first edition reverse foil from uh, Europe. Um, yeah. Uh, and then we have, this kind of goes to the initial DM sets, LOB yeah. to AST, so. Ultra rare. The ultra rare, uh, yeah. What's the condition like on these? Everything in this binder should be minimum PSA 8. Minimum PSA 8, okay. Yeah. Mostly nice. Okay, Yeah. fair enough. This is nice. I can't, this is, this is like top five card for me, oh, Summon yeah. Skull. I you know how much I got that for? I got it for 80 bucks. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> That's great. This is such a nice yeah, card, man. Like a minor, minor faded kind of like yeah. near mint copy. So, really, really beautiful. Yeah. MRL. Are you planning to collect the whole set? No, or what? no. Uh, I'm. If you notice, I'm only collecting cards I really either really like um, or I used back in the days. Yeah. Uh, you know, or nostalgic to me. Um, Interesting. So, yeah. Do you have anything you're gonna fill here, or are you done? Uh, if it come up, if it come up, yeah. right, I might pick them up. So, uh, I'm missing, this is a PSEV set, uh, mm -hmm. I'm missing a Buster Blader and okay. a uh, Premature Burial, both of which I already bought, I just need them to come in first, come in. so. Beautiful. Yeah. Play set of a Gemini off and a Reverse Gemini off. Um, mm. Gotta have that. I'm guessing you played this back in the day? Is that why? My favorite. It's one of those cards I really, really wanted back in the yeah. days. I just could never get it because, you know, it was like a first 1900, yeah, you know, Manila beater. Yeah. Um, I think it just has its history. Yeah. If you played it, you go back in the days. Uh, Magic cool. Cylinder, you yeah. know, both iconic and anime. I love this card, man. Yeah. It's so slept on. Man. Yeah, exactly. It's so nice. Yeah. And also a reverse secret as well. So. Here we have Yara's. And here's like a, let me show you guys the difference. So this is a TCG. And then this is the Asian English. And check out the difference in pop. Like, look at, the, look at that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so a playset of uh, NA Prince of Yata and then a couple. Um, oh, uh, shit. Korean and then also a Korean edition. first edition. Yes. 
that must be like crazy rare. It is very rare. Um, I caught it. I popped it just because uh, it was cheap enough because yeah. it was in more like uh, you know mod play, mod play um, yeah. condition. So there's a what, few. What, what, what does something like this go for? In the near mint copies. Yeah. It, uh, you could list your price. You don't. You're not gonna find really, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Crazy. Um, this is LOD. Why is yes. this one upside down? Uh, it's the upside down ones are the ones I need to replace because nice. they don't really need Condition. my PSA. They're fake PSAs. Nice. If you, <laughs> in enough. a way, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Are you planning to get? Re oh, is this Asian? That's English a reverse or? English yeah. uh, fairy lily. What's something like this go for? I would love to own one of those. So this uh, PSA nine that I cracked. Yeah. Uh, it went about three hundred, four hundred bucks. Three hundred, four hundred. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Beautiful. Oof, oof, there's the... There's the Asian English uh, Dark Asian Girl, of course, so... Um, Asian English here, right? Asian English, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I really, I think like most people, I actually like the portrait art a lot yeah. better. Uh, yeah, this, I is, think, this is a crazy art. Yeah, I think it was a wonderful mistake. Yeah. Yeah, if it came out just in like the DMG uh, release, yeah. uh, I probably wouldn't like that as much, but because they have the first stamp on it, uh, yeah. all the MFC of all sets, Yeah. It's, this, this is it's, crazy it's art. nice very nice so like actually one of the most badass arts i've ever seen in my life it's yeah. so insane yeah even though like the lines under his eyes like super gothic bro that's <laughs> kazuki takashi right there yeah uh There's some asian english also asian english river secrets on the vampire lord yeah. so um ast was unfortunate there's like barely anything like to collect. Much, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. a few iconic ones here I need to fill a uh, fill in a pres uh, Starlight Exodia, okay. Uh, as well as complete the uh, Bonds of Unity Dark Magician. Yeah. There's two more to go. Uh, I'm actually gonna collect the Asian English of these. They go, those go for like 400, 500 bucks yeah. minimum. Yeah, like good luck. crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. But I just, I when I saw that Stardust, the quality, the quality right? Quality is, I know, I non know. Yeah. Oof. Okay. <laughs> All right, so take me through these. These are two Korean first editions. Korean first editions, uh, Stardust, Black Rose. Uh, hard to find, hard to find, even harder to find in near mint copies. Yeah. Um, are these near mint? These are definitely near mint, yes. Okay. Uh, I would say the Black Rose is probably pretty fresh from the looks of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's wow. only kind of like, if there's any kind of like, you know, um, defects, it's mostly yeah. factory, so. That's beautiful. Yeah. The hollow foil is different as well. Yeah, they pop like no other. Yeah. What did these go for? You're gonna to have to find them first. Yeah. Um, but I think the Diamond copies for a Black Rose probably goes for around like 400, 500 bucks. Yeah. Um, and Stardust, uh, I can't even find them. So probably 500, 600 ish. Okay. Yeah. So they're not like first edition TCG level? They're not first edition TCG. Because okay. I think obviously, if you're talking about just pure supply, I will probably. It's obviously it's hard to say with Konami populations, right? Because they don't really give release numbers. Yeah. Um, especially with you know the English release being short printed in the yeah. tins, right? Um, but if I had to guess, I would probably say the Korean releases are even like probably on par or even less. Oh yeah, the, I, I think they're definitely less. Yeah, definitely less. Sure. It's just right? I don't think demand is. is yeah, that yeah. High. Obviously, the supply is super short, but the demand is yeah. even you know smaller. So. But I think they're actually one of the best looking Stardust and Black Rose, just because. Yeah, like, I agree, especially the Black Rose, like it really pops. Yeah, yeah. Very nice card. Yeah. I love these. I think these are so underrated. Yes, these are all PSA. Oh, nines. these tin, these tins are like freaking a thousand dollars, man! Like, especially <laughs> this one. Like, yeah. What is going on? Man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and these are hard to find in Yemen copies, just because you know uh, yeah. they all come out scratched. Um, so. Yeah. Are you planning to pick up the? The, this one in you saw Asian me looking English? you yeah. saw me looking right yeah. yeah i'm i'm looking for a english asian english of the shooting quarter uh mm -hmm. shooting quasar dragon so it's so hard to find i i've only this found the, one this listing. is the one that i sent you right this is one you yeah. saw me it's yeah. beautiful yeah this is so nice yeah yeah i want magicians of bond and unity in this type of like look. i think if i really like that card i would do it too yeah um so because the quality is just so much better I saw you had the twentieth anniversary of this, right? How come you don't put it in here as well? Um, just kind of because I kind of limit it to you know like one whole page, right okay, between okay. the two. Fair enough. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. What is this? The Chinese ghost rare. Is this recent? Uh, not that recent. I think I would say probably around like COVID times. Um, Holy, this looks so different. It looks very different, and it's unique to the Chinese printing of the blue eyes. 
It's the new Ghostware technology, you know, from yeah. OCG. So um, I don't know if we're going to see it in English or Japanese. So yeah. kind of what is this? Um, that's the Chinese copy, again, of the Prismatic Dark Magician Girl. Is that a prize or what is it like? Uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the kind of like um, mega packs. I see, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's, but it's a chase, chase pole. Um, okay. Yeah, probably that's goes awesome. from like, 200, 300 bucks. I see, okay. okay. Yeah. These are some like the nostalgic older carts uh, from back in the days. Beautiful card right here. Yeah. Reverse foil. Uh, this is from, I yeah. made a video on this. A reverse and a prismatic. prismatic yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I don't have the regular version. The regular. <laughs> yeah. Some video game promos. This card, I, I like it. I wish I would own an AE. But the problem is AE doesn't look that different from NA. They don't. They don't. There's no that's the, that's the, the difference. Main thing. The difference between EU, NA, and AE on this card is very minimal. Very minimal. Yeah. Some I've actually spoke with um, some collector of you know AE or some like kind of uh, uh, this card uh, collectors. Mm. Uh, they actually mentioned that I think uh, if I remember correctly, the Korean copy is look the best. Really? Yeah. yeah so I will Korean, pick that. Yeah. So I actually will pick that up. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have Lecter Rare, Ultimate Rare. These are your favorites, right? Yeah. This card, I love this card. I love Tsukuyomi. Tsukuyomi um, is like it's just so, so iconic. Yeah. And the Ultimate Rare just looks yeah. so nice. Yeah. It's like one of those cards where it's so usable, but it's not broken. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like it, it like can be completely garbage in some situations. And yeah. in other situations, it is so, so like brilliant yeah to gold it's more like a modern day ash in yeah. a way yeah it, it's so nice i love this card yeah it's so techy yeah i just had to have it actually. yeah so, um, beautiful yeah this is one of the few like uh uh alties like that are like with the border that i own i love this oh card. yeah yeah very very nice yeah wow here's the uh bls and it's reefing <laughs> these are nice <clears throat> holy smokes yeah the ulti rare pops really nicely too these are beautiful. And the ulti, the collector rare of its retrains, different versions. Um, obviously, the ghost rare. So yeah, beautiful. Um, Ryo, uh, iconic yeah. uh, Edison sense. format card back yeah. in the days. Um, you know, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Even this, this is so nice. Yeah. Uh, confession: I was an anti-meta player. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to run, you know, a play set of uh, Ryo's and Doom Cows. So <laughs> yeah, if you're not happy, I'm happy. Yeah, that's that's why I do. Uh, here's the ghost collections uh, of the more modern releases. The raw. I started with the raw. Um, yeah. Went to Dark Magician. Um, I still need another copy of Dark Magician because the middle one is the parallel yeah, foil. Parallel, yeah. Yeah. I may have like had like one too many. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Maybe it is what it is. Maybe. Yeah. So nice. I actually, now that I'm looking at these like alties. Yeah. I think I think they're actually quite nice. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't even mind. The I alti board. I I think um probably I'm probably one of the few people who played back in the days, but also watched uh, more recent Yu Gi Oh in Yu Gi Oh Rings. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a really nice show. Yeah. Um, really nice continuum, continuum, and I really like the um, kind of like antagonist or anti-hero. Yeah. You know the the Kaiba counterparts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they run, you know, the Boros series and the yeah. Firewalls. Um, so I really like that. Um, Interesting. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Beautiful card. Yeah. Man, there's so many cards I want. <laughs> Um, I have a uh, Cyber Dragon from the tin coming in, so okay. that's where that spot goes to. I think this card is so nice, yeah. super underrated. Yeah. Beautiful artwork. Yeah, and that's the actual SM51. Wow. <laughs> this is a stunner card, man. This yeah. has, this is like pop 400. And it's still and it, dumb it's, expensive. It's still super expensive. It, it makes sense, bro. Like, yeah. it, I, I see why, like, this is so nice. Yeah. Uh, I think this could get a 10. Um, oh, really, eh? Yeah, I think this could get a 10, so I'm going to regrade it. Uh, I first time it came back a 9, so... Okay. Yeah. Probably because of the centering, left to right. A little bit, yeah. But I don't think it's, like, it's too egregious. Bad, though, yeah. yeah, so... More Larts. 
Um, I'm missing a cop couple copies here. Uh, I will have a playset of the quarter century pedigree. Mm -hmm. I'm missing an ulti print. Okay. And I'm missing two ultis in Avers. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I want to pick up a Asian English. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. This one I have a European dipole. Yeah. Very very nice card. Yeah. Really so. Pops. So the center spot here on the pa on this page goes to the Asian English monster reincarnation. Mm. Uh, it's one of my favorite retrings. I really love the artwork. It was also nichely used in back in Edison format. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really liked it. So they even use it in Go. Oh, in yeah. Go? Yeah. Like oh, wow. In, I didn't uh, know that. In the Demock deck. Um, right. I don't know what's called. Uh, Reasoning Gate. Oh, yeah. They, I they see. use it with this. Yeah, yeah. So that's an Asian English uh, brain control. Beautiful. Uh, and WC4. Um, oh, shit. Stardust. This is Asian English. I didn't even know. Very interesting. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, wow. And a lightning storm, a place out of uh, you know Starlights. Yeah. <laughs> is that why you like Demox so much? Because you, you use those old spell cards. Yeah, yeah I'm. Uh, uh, when I run playback, you go back in the days. I'm the type of guy who run a lot of like you know more spell and trap heavy decks. Mm -hmm. Right. I see. Okay. But yeah. Uh, the quarter centuries, uh, the Starlights. Uh, love it. Beautiful. Yeah. And then here's wow. some the ultis, uh, scapegoat, book of moon. Uh, I know people have the you know champion packs as high as rarity. Yeah. I just I just can't come to like them. <laughs> um, so I get it. I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. This is so nice. I think the sea of Ori Calcars probably looks the best in super fail rare. This is crazy. Yeah, the, the way that kind of like the uh, hieroglyphs just go up and down, yeah. uh, um, like, you know, that background, it has so everything nice. goes for it. Beautiful cards. Yeah. Here's some of the trap cards section. Yeah. Uh, Solemns, you know, ultimate also rare, really ghost nice rare. Too. Yeah, fair rare. Yeah, fair rare. Uh, I have an Asian English uh, copy of the um, deck that virus. Oh. Two in here, so. This one? Uh, I have an English, oh, oh. English one on the way, yeah, on to the fill way, the pocket. The I see, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Crazy. And you can go from the back uh, on the, the back. spiner again. Um, this oh, is shit, the, okay. <laughs> every single Prince of Dark Magician Chaos uh, in English and OCG. There's the first Ed Korean Grail. And you know it's a Grail because <laughs> let's take a look at this condition real quick. <laughs> When somebody has to settle for this. <laughs> I'm a guy who only collects PSA 8s and 9s in my oh. miners. Uh, Holy and shit. I had to settle for this. It, this looks crazy. like it's been through the washer, but I have no other choice. That's crazy. I That's how you know it's rare. I could probably get a Nierman copy from you know, one of the Korean websites, I think. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't do me you know, too much better than this because I, at the end of the day, I want a, like, a you know, minty yeah. Yeah, copy. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes so. sense. Uh, and I'm what missing, are you missing a, here? Uh, I'm missing a uh, uh, IOCE in copy. Okay. I have a slapped up copy uh, in a nine. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little bit hesitant about cracking that nine just because it's the highest pop. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Makes yeah. sense. So I probably will pick up another one to fill the spot. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm also missing a couple random common Korean copies that I cannot find for the life of me. Do you plan on getting a uh, European first edition? Because this looks weird. I might have one actually. I'll show you it. Yeah, I have. It, it so looks the, like this. Yeah, so the two tents I have, uh, one is like NA, the other one's NA online. Okay. Um, so if I could come by by EU version, I definitely would, yeah. you know, try to pick it up. But you know, those are those are hard to find. Really by. hard to find. So beautiful. I think the one I have in the binder is EU, the first edition. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait, which one? This one? Um, there's only one first edition, right? Yeah. No, this is NA. Is it? Yeah, it's an oh, I'll show you the EU and I see, I see. Yeah. That's gorgeous, man. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful collection. And here's the rest of the other uh, copies, leftover copies of DMOC that I have. <laughs> Some I, I love sets. species collectors, bro. I love species collectors. Some so first sets I, I too, I O C, you know, all that. So that's gorgeous. Amazing, man. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible collection with us. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it for the Strictly Collections episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Check out the other episodes that I've done with other insane collections. And 
you know, let me know if you're a species collector. Like, is there a card where you would want to collect every single copy of? For me, it would probably be someone's skull. For Tony, it's DMOC, obviously. Let me know yours down below. If you want to support the channel further, you can support yourself by purchasing your own TCG accessories at strictlyseal.com or shop at my eBay as well as TCG Player. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. Me and Tony, signing out. Peace.